Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to uh, be looking at how to use Microsoft Excel to perform simple tasks in NECO data processing examination, as a practical examination. Okay, here we have a set of records here. We have serial number, student name, sales, first name, second term, child term, and uh, we have different type of different uh, various names here. There are sales. But the first term have different numbers or digits here, and the third term also have different numbers. Now let us look at what they ask us to do. But before that, I'm going to launch the Excel window because that's that is what we want to use. But before I launch that, let me remind you again that this gives you an opportunity to subscribe to our channel and then get vital information from us. You can put on the notification button so that you can receive updates from us. So let us quickly launch the Microsoft Microsoft Excel worksheet. So to run that, you can search from here. That's the fastest way you can get that. So click on this and click on Excel. Just type Excel before you get that, you get the application. So just click on it and it will open up. Okay. So this is my application here. So close this and click on the black workbook. Okay. So you have this. So now let's go back to the question and see what they ask us to do. For the question, we are asked to, okay, to, we are to reproduce the table, this table on that worksheet. So what I'm going to do is this: I'm going to type all of these students' name first here. So we start with Celia Mobarada. So on A we have an. So I put this on cap. I have S. Slash and that stands for serial number. Then the first, the second is. Okay, let's check. So these are the records. So we have student name. Under that we have names here. Look at this. These names are centralized. Then we have sex. They are also centralized. First term centralized. Second term there are no data here. So we are going to centralize. Since all these are centralized. Then we have third term. Centralized. Then we have two data. So we're going to recreate this table on the worksheet. Okay. So we have a student's name. The next one is student's name. Okay. You can click outside. Now you see that this is entry. So all you have to do is just to come to this place, place this here, and increase this. Until it becomes what visible. Then the next part is sex. Okay. Then we have a um, first term. Again, I'm going to move this. Increase this. Then we have a um, second term. Okay, then we have short term. Okay, short term. So, under this, the numbers are not that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I'm just using my arrow keys to move this downward. Then let's enter the student name. So I'm going to OK. Then I'm going to put the other names just like this. So let me highlight this. OK. And centralize. So this is the centralized button. OK. This is going to centralize the test. This button here. So all of that test I'm going to type here are going to be what? Centralized. So let me pause the video and type the other names to save time. Okay, so these are the various names. So here we have the colon for tutor. I think and that is bold. So I'm going to put it in bold and put tutor there. Okay. So I'm going to put bold and so I'm going to make it bold and put tutor. T L A. Okay. 
So I have to centralize that again by clicking on this. Now let's go to the cells. The cells are from the question, you know what the cells is. So I'm going to pause this video again and put the cells. But before that, I'm going to centralize them again because they were centralized. In fact, all the terms here are we are centralized. So I'll just highlight all of this to this point. And I'll click on this to centralize every test that I'm going to do. Type here. So I'm going to have mail. So let me see mail. So you see that it is centralized. So let me just pause this and put this to save time again. So these are the various sessions entered for the various names. So let's go to first step. For first step, we have digit here. So I have 52. So I'll move down. Then I have 85. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and fill the others. Okay, so these are the values for the first term. Then we're going to enter that of the third term, which is also given. So I'll enter those one and pause this and enter those values also. So these are the values for the third term, which corresponds to the values that we were given here. So they correspond to all these values. So let's go through the question again. So we have reproduced the table. We have to okay next break the headings. Okay, impute any term number between fifty between the ranges of fifty and ninety nine for the second term color. So we are going to enter values here and they are going to range from fifty to what fifty nine. So we are going to bold the headings. These are the headings. This one. So we are going to put this one, this one. So let's go and put them. So you'll do this. Starting from here, just drag it to this point and click on both here. So we have to enter numbers here between 50 and 99. So let me start 88, 67, 56, 89, 80, 70, 99, 98, 54, 65. So these are my random numbers. I pick those numbers randomly. So next, let's look at the next question, the next task. So the next task, okay, we have repeated 10 numbers within. So create a column after the third term titled cumulative score. Let me just copy this. I'm going to copy this and paste it there. Cumulative score. So after the after this is third term, there's going to be a column called cumulative word score. So we're going to put that here. So that's going to be here. Here. Let me just paste the control V. So let me drag this this way to accommodate all the so that's my cumulative score. Score okay. Next, let's see what tax they ask us to do again. So I have created the cumulative score. Then I calculate the cumulative score for each student in the cumulative score column. So let us go and calculate the cumulative score for each student. Now the cumulative score is the sum of all of this number for each student. For each student, you add this, this, and this. Okay, since this column just follows this, we can just auto sum this way. So go to formula and click on auto sum. So you click on this. So that's where you're going to do. hit the enter button. So that will give us the answer. So come to this place. Put this here, let this plus sign, let it change to this smaller plus sign and drag it down to this point. So that will give you the sum of all of this. Now, there are, there's another way you can do it. If you don't want to do it, you can do it manually. On this place, you're going to type this. You're going to write equal to, write equal to, then write sum, then open a bracket, then look at this. This is D2, you're going to type D2, then hold your shift, hold on your shift key to F2, okay? So we're going to do it F2 and then hit the enter button. Now you see that this score here and this are exactly what the same. So that's another method you can do without using the auto word. So this, this is another method, method that, that you can use, use without using, using the word auto score. So now let's look at the next question, question again. again. Okay. okay, we have completed the. Okay. okay. So we have calculated the cumulative score method as we have calculated another column after the cumulative score and title to it as well. So let me just copy this and paste it here again. Instead of title, we're going to see. Okay, so to get the average score, so you can come to this data as well with the social to the media as well. 
Let me just use that as a very very complicated thing. I'll try to use this way. You are you are you need to tie down the edge and not come in. So let's get the average. There are two dozen you can get the average word score. You can use this. The formula that you can also score, score and do what average. Average of what? what? Of, of F, F D two to F two. So it's not going to be included. You can come to this place and delete the the sheet from here. I'm going to tell us to do it. Okay. okay. So that's, so that's what we're going to do. Is this? You can also tie that this manually. Put it here to average D D two to what F two. Then it is the other button. So that that gives you how to come to this place and drag it downward. So this will give you what the average what value. Okay. Now, now there's another thing you need to know. You can also calculate the average value. value. Now, now since, since we have just have three different values, values here, one, two, three, you can just drop this piece and write it equal to two. G three. Yeah, that G two rather than G two divided by three. three. That will also give you the average score. score. So you see, see this is nice. You can see it now. Then you drag it downward. You know the difference. It's exactly the same word value. Okay, okay. But so there are different ways you can get your average. Like I said, you can use the auto sum from the other. Then you can do the auto sum. 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 Okay, DD2. The column and cell DD2 to LF2. That's what you can do. You can use this. G two divided by, by the total number of items one, one two three. That, 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 that gives you what our average. Okay, let's go to the next question. question. Next, next in, in the total, total row, can we make the total row of the first item and second item respectively? So let's go back and make the total row of the first item and second item respectively. So so can we make the total row of the first item? Okay, so when you come down to this side by side, you can sum up every thing together. But you can also use the word or also sum up from one another. Okay, so let me use this one. Let's try by type by equal to two. Okay, then then sum. Open the bracket. Then we're going to sum up D two to D eleven. Okay. So D eleven to D two to D eleven. Okay. Once you do that, you have like what you want to add together. It's not not proportional like you did it. This is D in capital letter or some other letter. You do the same thing. You just do it in capital letter. So that that's the total for that. Now now get for the set of just just do this and try to get this this way. So you you get it. The total for what the set of them. As soon as you have to take it to the next item. You are going to drag everything down down to this spot. Point. Now let's look at the next question. Okay. Next. Try the formula for calculating the total score for Musara Abdul Rafiq. Okay. So let's just go to the Excel worksheet. So we are going to try to calculate the total score for Musara Abdul Rafiq. Abdul Rafiq. So the formula to use is this. If I just come to this place and click on this, that is going to give you the formula. Can you see? Sum D D D to what? That is going to give you. So total score for average value. Okay. 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 Let me just copy the name. Musara Abdurrahman. Control C. Is the form of the last form of the value of is. Put that in the colon. Let's see. It will also sum. Put in the bracket. 
like I said, just this is uh, about you. You can just make me I just want to tell you the formula. But to tell you that, that you know that, that this is some of the form of D2 to F2. So, so D3 from D3, this is 3. You see here, D3 to F3. So that will be D3 to F3. Then close the bracket. So that was the one that. You're not going to do anything here. Now let's go to the last, last question. question. Okay, the last part of the question is to is to insert a bar chart consider of the uh, community score and the student name. So I'm going to select this. Okay. Then I'm con I'm going to hold my control hold down my control key and select this up to this point. So I'll go to insert. Then I'll come to this place. There are different type of uh, chart here you can see them here so let me see i'll click the one that is close to that let's see let me take this okay the type that you want so after clicking the type of chart you can come to this place and click this click on this and you can change it to either this or this okay so you can come to this place this is where it is you can change this just try to select from here and see the kind the type that you you're going to get. So look at this. Uh, so this looks more than a histogram than a bar chart. So click on this and I'll click on OK. So you have that. So you can come to this place and add what you need to add. So we have the cumulative frequency. Okay, so we can add a legend. So the legend will show what it, which what the various bars stand for you can also remove the grid okay so you can remove the grid to make it plain like this you can add various things so you can also come to this place and change the style that you want okay so you can see it this way different style you can scroll down and choose different style that you want so these are various styles of pie chart that you can find here so these are numerous type here so you can choose from this and pick anyone okay so from here you may you can choose what you want to be inside of this okay so you can choose what you want to be inside of this and click on what, apply so let's move this to the printable one area so now we are asked to print this on a landscape okay so let's go to print so you go to file you click on print when you click on print from here you can change this to from the uh, okay it is already on landscape sometimes it could be on portrait like this so you see that then you have to change it to landscape orientation now you notice here that it is only the chart bar chart that is showing so we can go back and place your cursor on this other part here so let's go back again and go to file print okay now you, I think you can see everything now so you choose your orientation so it is landscape orientation then you now click on what print before you click on print you have to select your printers from here now I do not have a printer so I'm going to print to a Microsoft uh, um, and I'm going to uh, convert it to a PDF file so that's what I'm going to do and I'll click on what print so allow it to come up so you can save it wherever you want to uh, save it but you can save it and print later or you can print it directly so i'm going to save it my uh, cell project okay so that is how to create a cell and also save in a cell